This is lecture 22, Boundary Layer Theory. So the reading that goes with today is in Dean uh, 9.3 to 9.5, chapters 9, chapter 9, section 3 to section 5. And today we're going to talk about one, uh, the, parado the paradox of D'Alembert. And then we are going to talk about boundary layers. And under boundary layers, we're going to talk a little bit about the boundary layer equation, uh, equations. Uh, and solutions and then in part B of that part we are going to talk about uh, calculating drag coefficients all right let's get started D'Alembert's paradox part one Okay, oops, not the best line. So, uh, last time uh, we calculated drag. So you remember we had this uh, drag calculation uh, for an inviscid, viscid, uh, and irrotational uh, sphere. And we found that the drag was equal to zero. And I said, what? This is not what we had done at the beginning of the semester. What is the problem? Okay, um, so I'll write that down. What is the problem? This seems strange. So we had no friction drag, right? And that was okay. Um, we said that at high Reynolds number, We've been saying this for a long time now, that high Reynolds number, there wouldn't be any uh, uh, friction drag. Um, we neglected viscosity. Um, so we figured that would happen. Okay. Um, the problem was there was no pressure drag. That's a problem. So if we were to go back and look, we had this um, pressure that uh, was a function of big R and theta, all right? And if I normalize it by one half rho u squared, um, we get back one minus four sine squared theta, all right? And um, so I can make a plot of that. So I put P of R theta by the one half rho u squared on this axis. Okay, I'm going to put my axes here. I'm trying to do a better job here. Well, it's a line. Right, and up here, I'll say that's 1. Down here, I'm going to say this is minus 3. Right, and let's see. Here, I've got um, 0, pi halves, and pi. And this is theta down here. And what we see is that there's this... Oh man, hard to draw. That was like the worst curve ever. You're probably laughing at me right now. So I'm going to try and fix that real quick. Oh, come on. That race tool is not working. I'll try one more time on that curve. Even harder than drawing on the board. All right, so I've got this guy right here. And I have something that comes down like this. And it comes back up like that a little better. Okay, and the important point is that the pressure here okay, is symmetric. Right, and I guess I wanted to point out so this is a sphere. So if this was theta equals zero, I'm going around that way, pi halves over here, pi. Right, and you know, I have this flow around here, and I have a perfectly symmetric pressure profile. 
so that when I add up the pressure all the way around, uh, it adds up to zero. Okay, so that sort of begs the question. Okay, the count down the road. Why is P of R theta symmetric? All right, so, and we need to bring in an important uh, concept here, okay? So, in viscid flow, uh, obeys uh, an equation called uh, Bernoulli's equation. Bernoulli's equation, okay? And um, Bernoulli's equation, we're going to see here more in a few weeks. Okay, Bernoulli's equation is essentially an energy balance on a streamline. All right, and what it says, maybe you've heard of Bernoulli's equation before. We're going to need a new page. Oh, that was what happened there. I'll go down here. I need a new page after. Page after. To ignore that, we'll fix that later. Okay, um, Bernoulli's equation is that P divided by rho plus V squared divided by 2 is equal to a constant uh, on a streamline. All right, or another way of saying that is by saying that if I pick two different points on a streamline, delta P over rho plus delta V squared divided by 2 is equal to 0, right? So if I think about my sphere here, what does Bernoulli's equation have to do with what I said? So I've got some streamline going around it. If I pick point 1 and 2, over here 1 and 2, all right? And I had U coming in, okay? And I'm going to have U going out. And so then V1 is going to equal V2. So that means P1 has to equal P2. So that means no pressure drag. That's, that's why I'm symmetric. I'm not losing any energy. So to break symmetry, to break symmetry, okay, Energy needs to go somewhere. I need friction. I still need friction. Okay? So I need delta P over rho plus delta V squared over 2 to equal some negative number. All right? That's my friction. That's my uh, energy loss. So that the pressure at the back is lower than the pressure at the front, right? One way to think about this is what we call sometimes this ball on a hill analogy. So imagine I have a hill here, I have a ball, and I start it rolling down, okay? It's going to roll back up, right? So the pressure here, okay, is like the potential energy. And the velocity is the kinetic energy. All right, and so what happens is as I'm going around the streamline, I actually speed up, okay, the pressure goes down, and then the pressure comes back up. And if I take away energy, if I have viscous losses, then I can't get all the way back up the hill, all right? The pressure will be lower here, and I'll have drag. So I need friction to, to be able to do that. But I got rid of friction because I was at high Reynolds number, and I said, I'm in viscid. So, you know, I said that up here. I said, no friction drag. So what is going on? So that's where we're going to get to boundary layers. Part two, boundary layers. Okay. This is how I add friction back in. How do I add friction back? It's by boundary layer, by boundary layers. Okay, um, so how am I going to get 
uh, you know, what, what does that mean? Okay, so do I have to start over? You know, do I have to uh, start over with the Navier-Stokes equation? Um, or, you know, was my potential flow, is that all just a waste? What's going on here? So we get a clue if we look at um, uh, the solution to this sphere problem. So if I go here, let me call this theta equals zero. Now this is theta equals pi over two, I said, right? And if I'm at here, e theta at pi over two is equal to minus e z. So this is my z direction, all right? And I had a solution for velocity at theta. It was minus u sine theta. This is from our last lecture. One plus big R divided by little r cubed. Okay, this was the solution from inviscid flow. And I want to look at what is v theta at big R and pi over two. So what's the velocity right there? Okay, and if I plug in big R uh, right there, that goes uh, away. That becomes a one plus one, so that gives me two. Okay, and then pi over two, sine of pi over two is just one. So then I get minus two u. Okay, and I said e theta, that's in the theta direction. So then I said, uh, so now I know vz, which is 2u. So the velocity is 2u right there. But wait a minute, that's on the boundary of the sphere. This doesn't satisfy no slip. Doesn't satisfy no slip. That's not a physical thing. How can, how can that be? How can I have this solution? It's just whipping right around there. Okay, so what if, okay, what if I have two regions? Okay, so now if I have my sphere like this, I'm going to have two regions. Oh, need a new page. Okay, so I've got potential flow around the outside. All right, and you coming in here. All right, but I'm going to zoom in right there. If I take that chunk right there and I zoom in, zoom in. All right, now I want to look up real close next to the edge of that sphere. And this says that that streamline from potential flow is going at 2u. But I need to have right there, I need to have no slip. So I need some region where I go from 0 to 2u, okay? And I'm going to call that region thickness delta, and that is going to be my boundary layer. All right, it's what saves me, okay? So let's list some characteristics here. So the outer region... and the inner region. So the outer region, this is where we had inviscid flow. All right, the size, the characteristic size of that region is D, the diameter of this sphere, right? I'll put D up there. Okay, um, so that means that the Reynolds number here is, oops, is rho u d over mu. And we said that's big, that's much larger than one. Okay, so because um, re is big, so, oops. Inviscid flow, that's okay. So that means we could use Euler equation and 
you know, when vorticity was zero, we use the Laplace equation. All right, in the inner region, um, this is where we have no slip is satisfied. Okay, um, this is the boundary layer. And the characteristic size here is delta. And delta is the distance we, um, to go from v equals 0 to v equals to u. It's that distance we want to go out to u. All right? So now the Reynolds number in this region is rho u delta over uh, mu. Okay? Um, that's, you know, uh, remember, that's that delta, if delta is small, okay, okay, then um, the Reynolds number uh, might not be big. Okay, so then viscosity will matter. We'll get friction back. All right, sorry, got a little excited, wrote a little messy, All right? So think about why friction matters, right? This is my ratio of inertia, so rho u squared, divided by viscous forces, mu u over delta. So this can still be big, but if delta is really small, my viscous forces are big. So really the boundary layer is the place where the Reynolds number is going to be order, you know, this Reynolds number is going to be order 1, this Reynolds number of delta, okay? Because now I have to have viscous forces that are big enough to, to equal these inertial forces, okay? So at some point that's going to happen, right? As I get smaller and smaller with delta, they'll get to be order one. That's where my boundary layer is going to matter, okay? So uh, that's, that's down bear's paradox, okay? Um, that's the resolution with boundary layers. So let's talk a little bit more about boundary layer theory. So we'll come down here, A, let's talk about um, boundary layer, boundary layer uh, equations, okay, and the solutions. All right, boundary layer equations and solutions. So I'm not going to lie, I spent a long time trying to think about <clears throat> what to talk about here. Boundary layers, there's books, whole books written on boundary layers, so we could spend months doing math on it but we won't spend today that's it not too much math even so we're going to think about a flat plate here for a second so i'm going to draw an example of a boundary layer profile just to orient ourselves here okay so um, when we're going to look at the boundary layer equations, we need some new assumptions. Okay, and our big one, um, uh, you know, these assumptions are coming from the fact that delta is small. That's going to allow us to make some of these assumptions. So the first thing we can say is that actually a flat surface is a pretty good approximation um, because you know, we can just stick with Cartesian coordinates, okay? And and uh, the reason that we can do that is because delta, if it's much smaller than L, you know, or D, the size of our sphere, L, you know, if we have a, uh, is the size of this thing here, okay? Um, that means we have a large radius of curvature. Curvature. Okay, and that large radius of curvature means that flat surface is a pretty good approximation. Okay, um, that also means we can do 2D. So, you know, we don't need to worry about um, these other directions. We can do 2D. 
All right, and then for our purposes, we're going to assume steady. Um, that that makes our life a lot easier. We don't have to do so much math. All right, so now we could go through and use these assumptions, okay, and do a similar um, non-dimensionalization, non-dimensionalization. Uh, of Navier-Stokes, okay, for this inner boundary layer region, okay, and what we'll find is that REL, which is rho U L over mu, um, if we assume it's much greater than one, okay, and if we assume delta over L is much less than one, uh, uh, then we end up with a set of equations which are called um, the boundary layer equations. All right, so I'm I'm skipping the derivation. I'm skipping this non-dimensionalization. So uh, there are supplemental notes um, on this derivation that will be posted on the web. Oh, the derivation. It's only it's only it's, only, uh, it's not this is not too bad. Okay, um, I just didn't want to spend the time in today's lecture to do it, but this isn't so hard. Um, you can, you could do this. You can follow it. Um, you guys are smart. You can handle this. So, but I will, uh, uh, <clears throat> I will just write the boundary layer equations here for you. So let me see. I'm gonna scroll down. So these are. Boundary layer equations. Okay, first is the 2D continuity equation in Cartesian coordinates dvx dx plus dvy dy equals zero. It's the first. Second of the boundary layer equations comes from an x momentum equation vx dvx dx plus vy dvy dy oh dvx dy don't forget that guy let me see dvx dy pardon my mistake equals minus one over rho the derivative of the pressure with respect to x plus mu over rho, the second derivative of x with respect to y. Uh, okay, these are the boundary layer equations, these two right there. Okay, so there's no steady term. Okay, there, there's another d squared vx dx squared that goes away. Okay. This, this is what comes out of the non-dimensionalization, okay? These are the boundary layer equations, okay? So, um, so just like um, a creeping flow, okay, an inviscid flow, okay, um, we get this um, by dimensional analysis. Okay, and just like those two, um, this leads to a PDE, okay, and um, uh, you don't have to know how to solve it. Be fun, but it's, we're going to say that's out of the scope of this class. Out of scope. It's an academic term. Scope, we use that too much. All right? So I'm just going to tell you what the solutions are. So I'm going to tell you about two solutions to these equations. The first one I'll call solution one. Solution one. Okay. This is a Blausius. Uh, uh, wrong. Blausius. Blausius. Okay. Um, this is an exact solution. So you think, great, we have an exact solution. 
This is in your book. So example uh, 9.3-1 on pages 239 to 242 in D. Right? So that's Blasius exact solution. The problem is there's uh, no formula for Vx. Okay, we say there's no closed form solution. So essentially you can write down an equation that you can solve by computer. Oops. And so I'm gonna write computer only. Right? So that means you know every time you want a velocity profile, you have to do Python or something to solve this. Okay? So uh, we're gonna ignore this. Um, we're Um, it's great, but we're just not going to spend our time doing the numerical stuff on Python. Okay, so solution two, okay, this is this guy's name that are really hard to say, really hard to write. Von Karman, that one's not so bad. Von Karman, and another gentleman, uh, Holhausen. Okay, they have an approximate solution. Approximate solution. Okay. They came up with a solution because boundary layer theory was done before computers. All right. Uh, they came up with a power series solution, which we will use. So here is their solution. U uh, three halves Y divided by delta minus one half Y divided by delta cubed. That's the solution. But you need to know delta. Delta is a function of x. This is the boundary layer height. And it's the square root of 840 y by 39 nu x y by u. All under the square root. Right? And this is nu here, remember, is the kinematic viscosity. or that equals mu over rho, All right? So that is the von karman polhausen approximate solution. Much better. We have a velocity that we can write down. We have a boundary layer equation that we can write down, All right? Um, you can get uh, the boundary layer formula. It's, uh, that's the one um, that's been in your book and for the Blasius, but this one, easier to write down. We can do some calculations. All right, so the downsides of the von karman polhausen solution are it's not as accurate. All right, um, but we can write it down. And another one is it's not in your book. That's also a bummer. Frowny face for Dean. Um, but if you're interested um, in another book where there's a solution, um, Panton, is a book I have in your list of other books. Um, chapter 20.4 on page 506 to 508. You can see how he got the solution. Also, a transport book, Bird, Stewart, and Lightfoot. They also have this. We often call this BSL. It's a famous um, chemi transport book. They have this one on 4.4. Um, which is page 136 to 137. Okay, so hopefully this is legible enough you can see. Um, uh, <clears throat> but these are also in these books if you want to go see how they got that solution. All right, so now really all we have left for today now is part B, is calculate a drag coefficient. Uh, new page. All right. So what we'd like to do is get a drag coefficient for this flat plate. So remember, we had a formula um, 
a while back for drag coefficients on flat plates. And I guess I'll just say at this point, so um, this will be, let's see, I'm just setting up a coordinate system. X, Y, Z, I'm talking about something else as I'm doing a coordinate system. So I'm drawing my picture of a laminar boundary layer again. And we're going to ask, what is the drag coefficient here? So now, um, maybe just to sort of step back for a minute, you know, we had we had this um, sphere, and we were asking, you know, what's the drag coefficient here? And we got the laminar case, right? We got the case of um, 24 over RE. Okay, and we said there's two other regions, right? There's this region where, um, you know, we have a wake, a turbulent wake plus a laminar boundary layer, and we had another case where we have turbulent wake and turbulent boundary layer. So turbulent, turbulent, we're not even going to go after the turbulent wake with a laminar boundary layer. It turns out we can use the boundary layer equation up here, right here. If we know something about the outer solution, that enters in here to this pressure profile. Notice I didn't write anything here about pressure. This is just a solution for a flat plate. And in a flat plate case um, here, the pressure is a, a constant, okay, and Vy equals zero. So, but if I have a sphere, that pressure uh, can change. We saw that, right? We saw that the pressure is symmetric. And if I have something where I have a turbulent wake, I can plug that pressure in, okay, and I get out a slightly different solution here. And this is why there's books all about boundary layer theory. And then I could predict, you know, could I predict that CD is 0 0.445, okay? Uh, for wake plus turbulent boundary layer, okay? We, we could do that um, eventually, but, you know, we don't have time. So what we're going to do instead is get the drag coefficient of just a flat plate, all right? We're going to get CF. We're going to compare that to what we had earlier. So, but, you know, boundary layer theory in principle could, could get to this point, but it takes a lot of work. So we're not going to go there. All right. So what do we do? How do we solve for drag coefficients? We have our four steps. So we get our solution, right, which we have from above, the Polhausen or the Van Karman Polhausen solution. So Vx is equal to U three halves Y divided by delta minus one half Y divided by delta cubed, where delta equals square root of 840 divided by 39 new x over u all right that's our solution and then so vy equals zero and p equals constant okay so now step two calculating drags was we need to simplify the drag force formula All right, so that's going to take a little bit of work. So let's write our drag force formula. We have the drag is equal to minus some area of n dot ex pda plus the integral over the area of n dot tau dot ex da. All right, and dx, okay, that's because of my coordinate system here. This is my uh, ex direction, because I wrote that as x, y, z. <clears throat> I don't even know if that's, let's see, x, uh, x, y, z. Oh, that's backwards. I think z should be coming out. Z should be coming out here. Sorry that. All right. So, uh, now, what do I do? Okay, n dot ex. Well, I need to look at my my geometry. Where is n? Okay, n is like that, right? That is in the ey direction. Ey. So I put in ey. So I need to evaluate those. N dot uh, ex is ey dot ex, that equals zero. That one's going to go away. Zero. All right? 
then I'm going to do n.tau.ex. Oh, how scary x. Ex. That's ey.tau.ex. And remember what we said that this gives us tau y x. I'm not going to do that all out. Now we can go look up tau y x, but it's Cartesian, so I just remember it, um, which is mu dvx dy plus dvy dx. Right? And now I said vy is zero, so that guy right there is zero. So it's just mu dvx dy. Okay, so my drag force formula has gotten quite a bit simpler. Now I'm down to the drag is equal to the integral from zero to some width and zero to the length of mu dvx dy. And now I'm going to need to evaluate that at y equals zero, right? y equals zero right there along the surface. dx dz. Okay. Getting close now. <clears throat> so part three then is I need to find uh, tau y z, uh, uh, x y y x y x by taking derivatives. All right, so we need to take dvx dy. So I have to take my uh, part of the Polhausen von Karman uh, velocity. So I have three halves, um, y over delta. My hand's starting to get tired trying to write on this. Sorry about this. y divided by delta minus one half y divided by delta cubed. And that's what I'm trying to take the derivative of. So now, luckily, delta is only a function of x, so I can treat it as a constant. These are constants. So this is just a derivative of a polynomial. So now I'm going to have u 3 halves. Derivative of y with respect to y is 1 over delta minus now I have the derivative, I have a one-half here. Derivative of this guy will be a 3 times uh, y over delta squared, and then by chain rule, 1 over delta, another 1 over delta inside. So I can simplify this. I can put, look, I have a 3 halves here, 3 halves here. That's convenient. I have 3 over 2, and a u, and I can pull out a delta, so I have an extra delta, and I get 1 minus y divided by delta squared. All right, so now I need to evaluate tau, oh, come on, buddy, tau yx at y equals 0. Well, that's going to be 3 mu u, don't forget the mu over 2 delta, and then 1 minus, and then I have a 0 over delta squared. That goes away. So I just get 3 mu u over 2 delta. All right, so now I'm to step 4. Evaluate integral. So I'm going to evaluate the integral I wrote up there, that guy right there. So I have my tau, I'm going to plug it right in, and it's pretty, uh, it's about the easiest uh, two-dimensional integral I can have, right? It's in Cartesian coordinates, so it's a nice thing about this part of boundary layer theory, we're all in Cartesian coordinates. 
enough to worry about cosines or sines theta. All right, so my drag is integral from 0 to w, 0 to l, a 3, let me scroll up and see what it is up here, u, u, divided by 2 delta, remember, that's function of x, uh, that's the one part, right, dx and dz, we're creating over dx, dz, okay, so let me plug some stuff in, so I need to remember what delta is. Remember, delta is the square root of, I had uh, 840 by 39. Do I have that right or is it upside down? 840 over 39, new x over, so extend this guy out, new x over u. Okay, so I'm going to plug these in here and pull some stuff out. So pull out my constants, 3 mu u divided by 2. And then I'm going to have, now delta is in the bottom, so I have 39 divided by 840. Um, and then I've got my integral from 0 to w, 0 to l, and I have nu x over u to the minus one half dx dz. All right, so now in the next step, I just need to integrate this guy with respect to x from 0 to l. So now that's going to mean I have um, that integral. So let me actually, I can do this w integral, the z integral, because there's no dependence on z. So I can just write 3 mu u w divided by 2 square root of 39 divided by 840, right? Now I need to do the integral uh, over L. So I can actually pull out uh, a square root of u over nu, and I'm just doing x to the minus 1 half. So in integration, I get x to the plus 1 half, and then I divide by 1 half, which is 2 times my 2, and I'll do that from L to 0. So that's going to give me 3 halves u, u, w, square root of 39, divided by 840, and the square root of u, L, over nu. Great. Got that. That's my drag force. Boom. Check. Got it. So let's see now. Can we get a? Can we get our coefficient, our, our drag coefficient for CF? This was a div, uh, the drag force divided by a parallel. And down here we have one half rho u squared. So a parallel. That was just the surface of my plate. So I have. L in that direction, I didn't do a very good job of saying that, L in that direction, and then W in this direction. So uh, X goes from 0 to L, and Z goes from 0 to W. So <clears throat> that's A parallels, just that rectangle. So that's going to be um, 3 halves mu u, w, square root of 39, divided by 840, square root of u, l over nu, and then I'm going to multiply by 1 over l, w, and then 2 over rho, u, squared. Now I start canceling things. u cancels the 2, 2 here cancels that 2, the W cancels there, okay? And I'm going to rewrite this so it doesn't get too messy. I have 3 mu, and I've got an uh, L in the bottom, and a row in the bottom, and a U in the bottom, okay? And then I've got a square root of 39 divided by 840, and I've got here U 
L over and then new, remember, is mu over rho, like that. Okay, so this looks like 3 square root of 39 divided by uh, square root of 840. And then this here, look, rho u l over mu, that's 1 over the Reynolds number. And this is rho l u over mu, that's the square root of the Reynolds number. So that is going to cancel, and I'm just going to get a Reynolds number to the 1 half in the bottom. So then I get cf is equal to 3 square root of 39 divided by the square root of 840 Reynolds number of the minus one half, which, if we approximate that number, is 1.292 Reynolds number of the minus one half. So now that is our coefficient. I drag coefficient for a flat plate. And if you go back and look, there was one in equation, let's see, there's 9.3 dash 1 8 and equation 3.2 dash 15. These are both in Dean. Okay, and these equations were for the laminar uh, boundary layer. Um, and the one in Dean has a slightly different coefficient uh, because it's coming from the Blasius solution. Okay, so uh, it's, but it's very close. It's like 1.3 or something like that. So very close solution. All right, so that's boundary layer theory. So we have, uh, just to sort of uh, zoom back out, review what we did, you zoom out. We said at the beginning that we had, you know, what do we do? We have, we have D'Alembert's paradox, we have the symmetry. Um, what happens? And we said, well, we still need to have friction. And friction comes because there's two regions. We have the outer region and the inner region because of boundary layers. And we said, aha, we can solve this inner region. We came up with the boundary layer equations, which are in these other notes. And we said there are solutions to them. Blasius' solution, which Dean uses, and our solution, the von karman polhausen solution, because we can write it down. And then we calculated the drag coefficient with that. And there it is. All right, good luck on your homework. We'll see you later.